Hello my friends and welcome back to Backpack Battles. Hope you're all doing well. I have been playing this game pretty hard the last couple days. Just really got into it. It's quite addicting and I wanted to show you one of the builds that I've been doing that I think you can do very consistently that will let you win very frequently every time. As you can see I've gained quite a few rating points using pretty much this build so I'm just going to show you how to get into it. Let's start a ranked game with the Reaper. The goal here is going to be to build a poison and tank reaper, so uh, obviously that's one of my favorite character archetypes in games in general. If you if you watch my Slay the Spire videos, you know that I really like enjoy the silent. So this is right up my alley, and I think it's very fun, very powerful, and will win very consistently. So if you're looking to gain rating, this is the way to go. Basically, the, the goal here is we are going to buy... Fly Agarix and Garlic, and we're going to use those to stack up a ton of faster food triggers and use the native poison from Storage Coffin plus the poison from Fly Agarix to build up a ton of poison while also tanking significantly. This is actually one of the best opening shops we could have because Walrus Tusk on sale is going to be really important. Leather Bag, of course, is excellent because you need more backpack slots early. And then we can buy a Garlic, and now we've already got our food synergy online. Just going to make sure that everything is in our... Always make sure everything is in your storage coffin as much as possible. You only need one tile of it to be in the storage coffin to gain poison. Um, and then there's nothing that we want to buy for one, so I'm not going to reroll. We'll just go into the first fight. We might lose this first fight because we didn't get a weapon. Usually you want, if you see one, to buy a wooden sword in your first round to try to make sure you win the first round. Otherwise, there's a chance you lose round one. Uh, it's going to depend on our RNG on how many times this 25% triggers. It looks like we got fairly lucky, so we triggered a lot of extra poison, and we were able to defeat our opponent very quickly. This is another item that we really want, the fanny pack, because this will speed up the triggers of our uh, items significantly. So we want to add the fanny pack makes everything in it attack faster, 10% faster, and so that stacks really well with the food faster triggers. I'm also going to buy the banana. This is earlier than I usually buy banana, but it's the only food in the shop, so we're going to buy that. You will want these eventually, but for the most part, you're just going to buy flag fly agarics and garlic, typically. I could buy the piggy bank here, but I'm actually going to roll because I'm really looking for a shield to lock in, and so I'm going to do that. And then I'll buy this health potion that's on sale. Um, because an on-sale item, notice that that costs two, we can sell it for two. So it's completely free to buy that item. You, can, you should pretty much buy every on-sale item that you see, because you just store the gold, you can use it, and then you can uh, sell it when you don't need it. I'm not going to buy the healing herbs, even though it combines with the health potion. We won't end up using that in the late game, so I'd rather not spend a lock slot on that. We're just looking for more foods at this point. <laughs> this opponent has a pretty good setup. They've got two wooden swords and... or they've got wooden sword, pan, and two whetstones, so they're going to hit pretty hard. We're hoping that we get enough armor from our garlic, which gains armor every three seconds because uh, we've sped it up quite a lot to be able to build up enough poison to take them out. Here, we're very happy to see we've got 10 and 10 that we want to buy, so that's perfect. We can buy this and buy another garlic. We now need to rotate our little food setup here and also make sure that we're combining into the spike shield. Spike shield is a really strong early game item, um, so I really like getting one of these. We're not going to buy another walrus tusk, but getting a... Uh, spike shield early is going to help us build up these wins without taking any damage. Um, we're also going to, at this point, start building to our sort of core setup with our items, which is going to look like this. So basically, with all of our food, we're going to want to build these 3x3 three three squares with fly agarix and garlic, or in this case, a banana. Um, now, because we have the fanny pack, we're going to do this just a little bit differently in this case. Uh, 
and then I'm one short, so I'm not able to one tile short, so I'm not able to put the health potion in. But we will gain those tiles back when we uh, combine the walrus tusk and the wooden buckler. So here we've got this garlic is getting plus two. This garlic's getting plus two. This fly agaric is getting plus two. Actually, is there a way I can arrange this so we get three? on this. No, it can only ever have plus two. Because this could be surrounded by three different um, items if I move it somewhere. And then these can all have up to two. I guess the banana can also have plus three. Basically, I'm trying to get these surrounded by as many different foods as possible. I think with our current tile setup, this is the best I can do. But if you see a better configuration, let me know in the comments. Always looking for good patterns for this kind of thing. We are building some armor here and doing some poison debuffs. And as the opponent takes a bunch of poison, you can see they are just not able to outpace the amount of poison we're outputting because we are triggering a ton of items in our uh, poison generating coffin. Um, here we get another garlic. That's great. Now we can just keep buying those. Then I'm going to reroll here. We're looking for more fly agarics. Uh, at this point, I'm just going to sell this health potion and buy another banana. I would prefer to buy more mushrooms, but the Banana is going to be sort of equivalent in this in this case. Um, here we can get our garlic. Let's do... I want this garlic to be touching multiple things. But I don't think there's a good way to do that. Alright, I need to, to put the banana in also. Let's try another configuration here. Trying to figure out exactly how much you have, how, how many items you can get touching each other item with the food is the difficult part about this build. So let's do our bananas at the corners, like, uh, especially because you want to maximize fanny pack usage as well. So if I were to build a setup that looks like this with the bananas at the outer corners, then I could have these in the center, but we don't want things to be touching one another like this. So we want them to, I want the bananas kind of in here and then we can do this. So this isn't bad. I can do better if I put the, the odd one out in the center. And then we've got this extra fly, uh, this extra garlic. Let's move this whole thing over one. So at least the banana is in the fanny pack. because no, then I won't be able to place the spike shield. So you really do want to spend some time optimizing these setups. What if I make it vertical? Actually, that, that seems right. So I'm just going to rotate the whole thing around one corner. And then we do end up with this garlic as sort of the odd man out. And we've also not really made the best use of this fanny pack, but we'll reorganize this as we go forward. Right now we have this touched by four things, this by three, 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 and three. So only this garlic is not being uh, buffed by enough other foods. And let's get right into the next fight. Um, we should be stronger than this opponent, I think. They're going to heal a lot, but we should be generating enough armor there. They're just trying to hit us. And most enemies who are just trying to attack, even with reasonable amounts of attack at this point, the amount of poison that we generate is going to be high enough that we will outpace their damage. And we generate a ton of additional armor. As well, Spike Shield is just really powerful against enemies that are trying to attack. So this is why this is such a powerful early game setup to buy this leather bag again. I think we're going to pass on more bananas here. The question is, do we buy Hungry Blade? Hungry Blade is pretty good because it attacks quite frequently. And what we're really on the lookout for is items that attack frequently. 
Um, that said, we don't have anything that synergizes with it, so I think we're going to pass on it. I will buy the pan for the same reason I talked about earlier. We can sell it for the two that we spent on it. And do I want the spear? I guess with both of these in the pack in the shop, I could buy another buckler and a walrus tusk. I don't usually love to have two spiked shields, but... Um, when they both, when it shows up both at once like this, I think it can be worth it. So I'm going to do that. Do I want to just sell my dagger and pan? We can sell this for two, sell this for two, and just get into Walrus Tusk immediately. Or would I rather lock a shop slot? I think the answer is I would rather sell out of these weapons at this point, And we'll look to buy better weapons later on. Spear actually attacks very frequently as well. Um, and isn't a terrible item for this build, so I think I'm actually going to lock that. I'm going to give that a try, and then we will go to the next battle here. This opponent has a bunch of bananas, so they're going to heal real, really fast. Um, but again, they just don't have the damage output to keep up with our shielding. Also, with multiple spike shields, we'll actually generate a decent amount of spikes. <laughs> oh, and even better, we can get a pineapple, which will give us more spikes. I'm going to wait on the pineapple and buy these other three items, though. We'll buy the spear, so we have a weapon. You want to be spending your stamina on something. And I'm going to buy this leather armor because that's going to give us a powerful boost. I'm going to migrate this whole setup, I think, again to try to get it to where we are hitting multiple things with the fanny packs. Um, the issue that I have is that I need three uninterrupted tiles for the leather armor. Two by two square, so we're not going to be able to fit everything in. But... We should be able to turn this setup again. Come back. Come back. And then we can place the spear here. This will have an empty tile. We don't need the empty tile, though, so I'll, I'll just put the garlic in. And then we've got this reserve. We've got this in our backpack, and we can get into our next battle. Um, and then we should be able to just buy more inventory slots next time. Got to keep up on inventory slots with what you're building. So we may lose this fight. This opponent actually is going to break through a lot of our block because they have a spear with a ton of uninterrupted space. So this could be a dangerous fight for us. We are slowly building up poison on them, though. And our block got us there. We're winning pretty easily. This is great. This will help with our spacing and then I do need to buy this. How much does this sell for? Four? Not really great to sell a spike shield. Because what I could do is move all this stuff up one. <laughs> and then we can get our spear to break block. Because now this is completely emptied. This is a slightly weird build where we have ended up not having as many fly agrix as you normally would want in this setup. Um, I could also migrate this setup down here and then try to build, try to get the spike shield back into play. I think there is a way to do that. So let me make that swap, actually. I think I'd rather have the spike shield in than have the spear breaking block. At this point, we are losing out on having stuff in our storage coffin. So we're going to be generating a lot less poison if I do this build. Um, we also have the... Okay, I should definitely swap this. Let's do... Yeah, this is going to be a lot better because now we at least have a lot of these items in 
in the fanny pack, so they're triggering a, a little bit faster. I think this is the strongest setup we can have, because we have the spiked shields in. I wouldn't mind being able to get these guys activated in the storage coffin, but we will be generating some poison just from the spear attacking frequently, so this shouldn't be too bad. This could be a more difficult enemy because they have the magic staff, so that's a, an upgraded weapon. Um, and they also have a health potion, which does remove poison. That being said, with two spiked shields and the leather armor, giving us a ton of additional block, we're able to just tank through what they're doing. We're always going to go Witch on this build because the 30% chance to return a debuff is an enormous amount of debuffing and will help us beat other poison builds. And also, I'll, we do intend to tank up a lot, so a lot of times this game will go to fatigue. One reason to have kept the dagger is to be able to build the poison dagger with a pestilence flask. But for now, we're just going to buy the pineapple, and I'm going to roll for more inventory space. Able to find this, which is great. I really like Box of Riches on this character, but I'm going to buy the Stone Skin Potion and reroll. Looking for anything that I can add to, as inventory space. Here I'm going to sell the potion and buy this Fly Agaric, because we really want to be able to start improving our poison output. So at this point, I have a choice basically between getting my spike shields in or getting the pineapple in, or I could go with spike shields and no leather armor. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Because right now we have a total of 12 empty slots, so that's 4, 4, and 3. So I can definitely fit all of these in, we'll just have to move things around a little bit. So this configuration, for example, um, doesn't work exactly because I need uh, a 4x4 setup, but we should be able to find one that works. So let me again pull everything apart. I might try building everything around the pineapple at this point. We can do our bananas hooked around the corners of it. Actually, what if I do this one here, then we do like a garlic, an agaric, a garlic, agaric here, shield here, which unfortunately doesn't give us the, the boost from fanny pack, but it's one of the better ways we can do this, I think. And then we can place another garlic here. Then we've got this spear. Ideally, I would like the spear to be pointing towards the empty spot, but I guess I'll just put this stone in. This is why you always buy stuff that's on sale. You can just uh, put it in for one round, and it gives us a tiny amount of value, and then we sell it next round. And this isn't bad. Most of our foods are, are uh, getting triggered getting the food buff from three different things. Our opponent has a Steel Goobert, which is going to increase the damage of their weapons a ton. Um, and they're breaking our barriers a lot. Now we are generating a lot of spikes and a lot of poison, plus healing from our pineapple. Unfortunately, we didn't quite get there. Close, but not quite. Gloves of Haste is very good, but I think I'm actually going to... Well, I'll buy it, but because it's on sale. Um, but I probably won't equip it. We're going to be looking for things that are more important. Blueberries is something we haven't seen yet that's really important to this build, so very happy to see that. We can now get a ton of extra buffs on our foods. And then I'm going to roll again and buy this fanny pack. Now we once again are going to have to reorganize our entire inventory. <laughs> So let me do that. Because basically I want to build a big pattern with my foods. 
And this is going to be the standard pattern that you're going to use for food pretty much every time. Is going to be something like this. With garlic, garlic, and then a blueberry in the center. And then because we have a few too many non fly agaric foods, we have to do something like this to create the ideal scenario for our food setup. I could move this banana to where it's hitting more things, or this one could go up here potentially. If I then were to place my spear along the bottom here, then we can do this. Put the banana there. We get this in, we get this in. Still a little awkward with that single tile. So let's move the banana up one, and now we have a double tile. And then I can do this. And then I could do Gloves of Haste in here to trigger more often. I could also do this and see if I can get two anyhow, in any way. So I could put this here. Still gives us a lot of boosts. Then we get this, this, and this. This isn't a terrible setup. It does sort of m not maximize the blueberry usage, but we at least get five on this fly agaric, so it's going to trigger a lot. And then, yeah, I like this. Let's go into the next fight. We don't really care about having this guy actually hitting stuff, um, so this makes things trigger faster at night, but by the time we get to night, we should have the advantage anyways because of the bonus fatigue damage. Lightsaber is kind of cool. We won't be building regen yet, though. Uh, later on, we will. I would probably want to get rid of this spear at some point as well. It's not a huge boost for us right now. Um, I'll still buy the protective purse here. We'll buy this stone skin potion. And I'm going to reroll again. Really getting a little unlucky on finding foods, but that's okay. We can sell this rock and buy one of these. And now we're able to increase our inventory space a little bit. What if I do a fly agaric there? Do that there. We can throw in the stone skin potion, because why not? And then we've still got these gloves of haste that I can sell. I could also just sell this spear and start building up another grouping around this area. Is there somewhere I can get this banana where it doesn't mess things up so much. Not really. Blueberry with this sort of star-shaped formation of mushrooms around it is a an interesting setup as well. I could do something where I have like like this setup with blueberry, mushroom, garlic, blueberry, mushroom, and then I would have another garlic like this, and then pineapples going out the sides would be also powerful. So does this boost things? Not really, that's worse. Alright, let's just go to the next fight. One of the nice things about this build is it's very strong, so you don't have to do as much um, exact movement of things, and you're gonna figure out like the, the patterns. That circle that I showed you is very powerful and really important for what's happening here. So you can see our opponent at this point is taking 10 fatigue damage and 28 poison damage. We're taking 15. But also they're hitting us a lot and we have 15 spikes. So that's why we're winning these fights so easily. This one I think only sells for three, so I'm not going to buy it uh, for four. I will buy this. We get another blueberry. That's excellent. And I'll keep rolling. There's a couple items I'm looking for that we haven't seen yet, so I'm just going to keep rolling until we see those, but I will also keep buying garlics, blueberries, and fly agarics along the way. And we want more inventory space whenever it happens to show up. 
is there something I can do like this? Yeah, so that's not bad. Now I can gain another boost from a garlic here and a blueberry here. We can have our spear there with a single extra tile. And sure, that can that can be buffing our fly agaric by one. I wouldn't mind Book of Light if we had found better armor at this point. Uh, oh, I guess I should put this here and here because this will now trigger more frequently. Um, but for now, I think we're okay. Let's get into the next battle. <laughs> Definitely some reorganization I could do on this side profitably, I think, so I should look into that next round. One other item to keep an eye out for is this Shield of Valor. Um, if it's next to, to Garlic's, you get a ton of extra armor from it. It also works extremely well with any shields you might have. It looks like we might be just short. No, we're winning this one. So we got our win. We have only lost one round so far. Let's go to survival mode. We gain a health back. And have to survive seven rounds to try to get as many wins as we possibly can. I am going to pass on the scythe. This is pretty nice with uh, with fly agrix, but it is quite awkward to find a way to get it into our setup. That said, our current setup is a little weird, so maybe this will fit, and we can boost our poison output this way. Um, I think I'd rather just reroll and look for better armor and more... Uh, more inventory space. Just gonna keep ignoring most of these things. Here's another critical item that we hadn't seen, haven't seen yet. So, the corrupted crystal you can socket into an armor piece, and whenever you have inflicted seven debuffs, which we're doing a ton because we're spamming out poison all the time, poison's a debuff, you gain five armor. So this is going to be worth a ton of block over the course of the wave. Or <laughs> I say that like it's Brotato. Over the course of the uh, game, um, we will be able to gain a ton of armor. I also definitely want this blood amulet because we can boost our leather armor with that. That's the reason to buy leather armor is because it can become a better item with blood amulet. So I'm actually going to sell this Gloves of Haste and this stone skin potion to get enough money to build this right away. And then we can get our vampiric armor going. Then I can start making a nicer setup here. I guess I could actually do this, which is better. Because then the spear is gonna break block a lot. Let's also reserve this fanny pack, because I want to fill out my last few backpack slots. Is it time to think about reformatting this whole side of the field? It probably is, but I'm very lazy, so I'm just not going to do that right now. <laughs> this opponent has a similar build to what we're trying to do with the holy armor with these corrupted crystals. They're trying to debuff us and gain a ton of extra armor. But you can see we start with a bunch of armor and gain a ton. Um, they are cleansing poison with this, because every three seconds this cleanses two poison. But on the other hand, we are outputting a lot more uh, poison. So even though they have less, they're taking damage from our thorns, and we are slowly chipping away at them. Now we have our Vampiric Armor, so this is going to heal us every time we attack, but more importantly, it converts 30 health to 60 armor, so any healing, that lets our healing start working right away. Because if you don't start damaged, then any healing we have, such as from these bananas or pineapple, um, aren't doing anything. Definitely going to buy the blueberries and the fanny pack. This doesn't combo with anything I have, let's buy the purse as well. Reroll, and I do want this pineapple, so I'll probably sell something for the pineapple. Um, it might just be one of these protective purses that I just bought, but at this point I now do actually need to reorganize my whole setup here. So let's start with kind of the standard setups, which is going to be one of these 
with a blueberry in the middle. So this is the pattern that you're looking to make most of the time. And then I'm going to have this here. Put a blueberry in the middle. This can be basically the same as another blueberry in the center. And then if I do a pineapple up this side, it's going to have more buffs. So at this point, I've got this one buffed by four, three, five. Banana buffed by four. Blueberry by three because the banana is eating some of its space. What if I have the banana curve out? And then we do this setup. So now this one's by five, four, three. Four, four, three. And then this is by four. Then uh, I've got another banana that can go up there. I'm gonna sell one of these purses to buy this other pineapple. So I can start boosting these things a little more. This pineapple is not as boosted as I would like. So I could do some reorganizing there. The The thing that I'm trying to fix at this point is this blueberry that is only touching two things. Because because blueberries only take up one tile, you should be able to get them to hit multiple things very easily. So what if we do garlic like this? This blueberry is now touching three things. Yeah, and then this garlic also has six buffs, which is kind of awesome. Alright, this looks pretty good. And then I can do this along the bottom. Ideally, that would also get uh, the fanny pack buff, but we don't need to do that. Or more of these things would be getting the fanny pack buff. And then we can do these. I guess actually if I want those as empty slots, I need to do it like this. This can go in here. And then we can have this just kind of in wherever or here where it's going to buff the um, vampiric armor, which will convert my health into armor more often, as well as itself triggering more often because of the fanny pack. All right. I like this setup. Let's go to the next fight. Destroying block is good because poison doesn't pierce um, block. So we do still have to work our way through enemy block. You can see we're turning a lot of our health into block, but we're then healing it back because we've got these pineapples and bananas. And so as we build up more poison on our opponents, we really start pulling out ahead. Not gonna buy this. We don't need a four, like a four wide one. We need three wide ones or, or two by twos. I wouldn't mind the Book of Light be if we find uh, one of the holy armors, but until we find that, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'll buy this though. And then, great, we got another garlic. So that's gonna kind of mess up my setup a little bit. Goobert is something that is really worth looking for, um, especially early. If you make a poison Goobert, that can be really valuable. So he combines with two mushrooms to make a, a poison Goobert. Um, in this case, I think it is probably too late to try to build into a Goobert because we really need these fly agarics to just be buffing all of our other foods. So I'm just going to reroll past this and look for just more food items. Nothing there. Look for more food items. Very happy to buy this Shield of Valor, though. That's going to give us a big boost. Um, I should also buy this Piggy Bank because it sells for two. You gain one just for having it in your inventory. So if we keep it even for only one round, it still is a big buff to us. Looking for a Blueberry to go in that spot as well. And then just more fly agarix. Oh, I should have had... Oh no, this still this still gets uh, one bonus. Tile. This opponent is attacking very frequently. So you can see this opponent has a ton of block. They're using a similar setup, but with damaging weapons instead of poison. 
and these Claws of Attack are going to hit really hard. We're stacking up a lot of poison because they have two Holy Armors, so they are cleansing our poison much faster than we're applying it. But because we're generating so much block from our Vampiric Armor, and we are still generating a lot of poison and healing, we were still able to get there. Buy this Fanny Pack, and now we have a full setup. And then we can buy this. No longer need to buy inventory items. And now we've got the really excellent scenario of having this Shield of Valor buffing all of our armor items. Actually, if I swap this, it's going to also buff this garlic. So these are now also always giving 30% uh, more. And that's really powerful for us. I don't hate the Ripsaw Blade removing opponents' thorns and... Like, this might just be better than the spear, because we don't have anything that the spear is buffing at the moment. Spear cell for three. Yeah, since spear cells for three, I'm going to buy the Ripsaw Blade. Just removing spikes and regeneration from our opponent is better than the damage and it, that the spear does, and it just has better DPS overall. Weapons are not a huge component of what we're doing, of course, but it's still right to optimize that, I think. This opponent also has a Ripsaw Blade, which means they're going to eat our thorns as we generate them. Um, and they are poisoning us with the Poison Dagger, but they have no way to remove poison other than just this carrot, which cleanses a random debuff. So our poison is going to stack up really high, and our block is really starting to get very powerful. Because our opponent has just all weapon sets, every time they hit us, we gain... 35% uh, chance to gain 8 block, we gain 1 block here, 1 block here. When we inflict debuffs, we gain more block. So we do outpace them in terms of block compared to their incoming damage, even as they were getting really strong in the in the later stages of that fight. I'm going to reroll this, and... Okay, great. We got a holy armor, so now I'm going to need to move some stuff around because we have just not quite enough tiles. So let's get this down here, this in the center here, put this here. Can I fit everything? Where we have a kind of awkward setup where I can't quite fit all of these in around this thing. Even though I have the exactly right number of tiles, I need to move stuff around to to create the spacing that we need. It's kind of the fault of these bananas. <laughs> so I might end up sacrificing the efficiency of one of these bananas just to make sure that our defensive setup is better. I could also, is there a corner I could move this to that's better? Like, I could move it into here and move the blueberry. But for now, I think this is correct. Um, we've got the holy armor. It's next to a holy item, so it's giving us a little regeneration. It's also going a little faster and going even faster during uh, fatigue. This is buffing all of our armor items. So, yeah, I think this is kind of the right way to, to build this setup. And basically, like I said, the goal here is just to make this square. <laughs> and you can repeat this over and over again. It's a pattern that you can tessellate. This opponent is healing a lot and hitting us pretty hard, but we are generating so much armor. And their fatigue damage is going to... Here, let me slow this down a bit. They're taking twice as much fatigue damage. They're taking 30 points of poison every time. So while they are hitting us really hard with weapons, they're also taking a bunch of spike damage. I think we might not win this one, um, just because they have uh, the life steal from Mana Thirst, which is really starting to add up. But we are hitting them for 30 back every time we hit them. So we actually did get there. This is also just all bonuses, so we don't really need to worry too much about how it's working exactly. Uh, I would rather have more fly agrix than uh, bananas at this point, so I can 
buy this and swap some stuff out, I think. Like, if I swap this garlic for a fly agaric, and then I can have this garlic here instead of a banana, then I just want a blueberry up here. Because the banana is just not as valuable as the other foods at this point. Really not much that we can upgrade right now. Um, which is the sign of a, a well-played game, in my opinion, because we just didn't waste any money on anything we didn't need. This we don't have any use for unless we also buy the dagger. Do we want a bloody dagger? Um, I think I'll just buy this blueberry. And then keep rolling. We're mostly looking for more corrupted crystals at this point. Because those we can slot into our armors and gain quite a bit of benefit there. More garlic. Is there anywhere I would like to, anything I'd like to replace with garlic? It doesn't really look like it to me, so I'm gonna keep rolling, I think. Similarly, I could replace like this banana with a fly agaric, but I don't think I need to. I could actually replace it with a book of light. How much did bananas sell for? Two. So that would let me get another holy item next to this holy armor, which is pretty powerful. Um, it would mean like putting that there, and then we would have two more regeneration because holy armor gains gives you two regeneration uh, at the start of the battle for every holy item you have. That might be better than just the banana. Because banana gives us four health every five seconds, slightly buffed by being next to garlic, whereas just two regeneration is going to be better than that. So I think we'll start one battle and then we'll, we'll make that minor upgrade. I probably should have re-rolled once there because of... Let me slow this one down. So this opponent has a lot of crystals on their weapons. Opponent below 30% health deal plus 50% damage. So they're trying to, to get us low health. But because we are taking damage on our armor instead of damage on our health, these corrupted crystal bonuses are not actually coming into play yet. On the other hand, they have a lot of cleansing effects, so they've removed a lot of our poison. They also have Tim on hit steal a random buff, so they're stealing our, our buffs. But we are generating so much armor and so much poison, so even though they are cleansing a lot of it, we were still doing poison damage, and as we went into the late game, fatigue damage. I'm going to put this in here so that we get a little bit of extra regeneration. This last slot, we'll, we'll just try to find something that does anything for it, because we're only going into one more fight. Like we could do pocket sand. I think I'm going to just buy the pocket sand to start with, and if something better comes up, I'll happily sell for it. Um, vampirism, I don't think we need. Could I fit in another holy armor instead of some of this stuff? I could sell out of a spike shield, and then the pocket sand, and I guess one other item. I would need to gain one more tile than that. But a second holy armor is going to be so much more health than these spike shields, so I think that that is going to be the way to do it. If I were to do this, then we can do this, and then I need to gain one more tile back to be able to put Mr. Struggles in. So, probably I just lose out on one blueberry. It does reduce the efficiency of my foods uh, a little bit. Like, this garlic and this pineapple get 10% worse each. But the amount of extra armor I get from that setup is really strong. Um, is there any food I want to replace with a couple blueberries? Not really, because I could buy this one and, and do some replacements. For now, I think this is the best setup, though. Let me roll one more time and see if we get anything that we want. Gin lamp, not so much. And nothing here that I can buy. I was looking, I guess I, I should sell out of my items and keep rolling just in case we get something really cool. 
I guess an on-sale corrupted crystal is the only thing we would care about. Uh, nothing. All right, yeah, so we, we missed on everything. Let's go to our last fight. And this opponent is, I think, not a huge challenge for us. They have a, a mana setup. That's a kind of cool setup. I don't think I've seen someone do this before, where they're trying to, to boost the magic staff damage um, really high. But the, uh, they don't have any way to pierce armor, it looks like, and we are generating so much armor. Um, and when fatigue sets in, we have Mr. Struggles here, so they're taking extra fatigue damage. They also have no way to remove our spikes or our regeneration. Um, so we are healing quite a lot. That said, they're stacking up a lot of cold on us. So, and they, they have actually removed all of the poison. So maybe this opponent actually gets there. The amount of fatigue damage that they're taking is really starting to add up. But one more critical hit we could lose. But we got there. All right, so there you go. That is the Poison Reaper. Um, I think that this is just an extremely powerful and efficient way to build the character. You're going to end up with this setup pretty much every time. Just build these squares of two mushrooms, two garlics, and a blueberry, and keep building those uh, throughout the whole game. You can, and then mix in some pineapples, because pineapples are very powerful. And then on the opposite side, you're going to want as many holy armors and sh shields of valor as you can get. Um, I also highly recommend using a spiked shield to get you through the the first through few waves. Uh, I usually wouldn't go two, we just happened to get two. You do have to adapt a little to the circumstances. But anyways, I hope that this helps you in your own games ranking up. We got how many points from that? Let's find out plus 28, so we were no longer Platinum 69, which is tragic, and actually missed out on ranking up uh, by three points. But with all five lives left, we made 17 wins, one try of the, the maximum possible. Um, and I think you can very consistently reach that kind of performance with this build. All right, my friends, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, of course, feel free to leave a comment, like the video, both of those help a ton with the algorithm, and you can subscribe to my channel for more of this and other strategy game content. Cheers, I'll catch you next time.